Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Good morning and praise the Lord. Today is Wednesday, May 15th, 2024. Today we celebrate Pacomios the Great Martyr. Saint Pacomios was born of pagan parents in the upper Thebaid of Egypt. He was conscripted into the Roman army at an early age. While quartered with the other soldiers in the prison in Thebes, Pacomius was astonished at the kindness shown them by the local Christians, who relieved their distress by bringing them food and drink. Upon inquiring who they were, he believed in Christ and vowed that once delivered from the army, he would serve him all the days of his life. Released from military service, about the year 313, he was baptized and became a disciple of the hermit Palamon, under whose exacting guidance he increased in virtue and grace, and reached such a height of holiness that because of the purity of his heart, says his biographer, he was, as it were, seeing the invisible God as in a mirror. His renown spread far, and so many came to him to be his disciples that he founded nine monasteries in all, filled with many thousands of monks, to whom he gave a rule of life which became the pattern for all communal monasticism after him. While St. Anthony the Great is the father of hermits, St. Pacomius is the founder of the Cenobitic life in Egypt, because Pacomius had founded a way of monasticism accessible to so many, Anthony said that he walks the way of the apostles. St. Pacomius fell asleep in the Lord before his contemporaries, Anthony and Athanasius the Great, in the year 346. His name in Coptic, Pacom, means eagle. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, forgive our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Our epistle reading for today, Wednesday, May 15th, 2024, is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 13 through 22. In those days when the Jews saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they wondered, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. But seeing the man that, that had been healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred with one another, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that a notable sign has been performed through them is manifest to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But in order that it may spread no further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all men praised God for what had happened. For the man on whom the sign of healing was performed was more than 40 years old. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 5, verses 17 through 24. The Lord said to the Jews who came to him, My father is working still, and I am working. This was why the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also called God his own father, making himself equal with God. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever he does, that the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son, and shows him all that he himself is doing, and greater works than these he will show him that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, 
that all may honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, present everywhere and filling all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us. Cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, gracious Lord. Today we will discuss the Jesus Prayer. The Jesus Prayer goes like this, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Prayer is the basis of our Christian life, the source of our experience of Jesus as the risen Lord. Yet how few Christians know how to pray with any depth. For most of us, prayer means little more than standing in the pews for an hour or so on Sunday morning, or perhaps reciting in a mechanical fashion prayers once learned by rote during childhood. Our prayer life, and thus our life as Christians, remains for the most part at this superficial level. The Challenge of St. Paul But this approach to the life of prayer has nothing to do with the Christianity of St. Paul, who urges the Christians of first century Thessalonica to pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. And in his letter to Rome, the apostle instructs the Christian community there to be in constant prayer, Romans 12, verse 12. He not only demands unceasing prayer of the Christians in his care, but practices it himself. We constantly thank God for you, 1 Thessalonians 2.13. He writes in his letter to the Thessalonian community, and he comforts Timothy, his true child in the faith, with the words, Always I remember you in my prayers. In fact, whenever St. Paul speaks of prayer in his letters, two Greek words repeatedly appear, pantote, which means always, and adialeptos, meaning without interruption or unceasingly. Prayer is then not merely a part of life which we can conveniently lay aside if something we deem more important comes up. Prayer is all of life. Prayer is as essential to our life as breathing. This raises some important questions. How can we be expected to pray all the time? We are, after all, very busy people. Our work, our spouse, our children, our school, all place heavy demands upon our time. How can we fit more time for prayer into our already overcrowded lives? These questions, and the many others like them, which could be asked, set up a false dichotomy in our lives as Christians. To pray does not mean to think about God in contrast to thinking about other things, or to spend time with God in contrast to spending time with our family and friends. Rather, to pray means to think and live our entire life in the presence of God. As Paul Evdokimov have, has remarked, our whole life, every act and gesture, even a smile must become a hymn or, or adoration, an offering a prayer. We must become prayer, prayer incarnate. This is what St. Paul means when he writes to the Corinthians that whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10.31 the Jesus Prayer. In order to enter more deeply into the life of prayer and to come to grips with Paul's challenge to pray unceasingly, the Orthodox tradition offers the Jesus Prayer, which is sometimes called the Prayer of the Heart. The Jesus Prayer is offered as a means of concentration, as a focal point of our, for our inner life. Though there are both longer and shorter versions, the most frequently used form of the Jesus Prayer is Lord Jesus Christ, Son of, of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. This prayer in its simplicity and clarity is rooted in the scriptures and the new life granted by the Holy Spirit. It is first and foremost a prayer of the Spirit because of the fact that the prayer addresses Jesus as Lord, Christ, and Son of God. And as St. Paul tells us, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12.3 The Scriptural Roots of the Jesus Prayer the scriptures give the Jesus Prayer both in its concrete form and its theological content. It is rooted in the scriptures in four ways. One, in its brevity and simplicity. It is the fulfillment of Jesus' command that in praying we are not to heap up empty phrases as the heathen do, for they think they will be heard for their many words do not be like them. Two, the Jesus Prayer is rooted in the name of the Lord. 
In the scriptures, the power and glory of God are present in his name. In the Old Testament, to deliberately and attentively invoke God's name was to place oneself in his presence. Jesus, whose name in Hebrew means God saves, is the living word addressed to humanity. Jesus is the final name of God. Jesus is the name which is above all other names. And it is written that all beings should bend the name at the name of Jesus. In this name, devils are cast out, prayers are answered, and the lame are healed. The name of Jesus is unbridled spiritual power. 3. The words of the Jesus prayer are themselves based on scriptural texts. The cry of the blind man sitting at the side of the road near Jericho, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Luke 18.38 The ten lepers who called to him, Jesus, master, take pity on us. And the cry for mercy of the publican, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 4. It is a prayer in which the first step of the spiritual journey is taken, the recognition of our own sinfulness, our essential estrangement from God and the people around us. The Jesus prayer is a prayer in which we admit our desperate need of a Savior. For, quote, if we say we have no sin in us, we are deceiving ourselves and refusing to admit the truth. 1 John 1 verse 8. The three levels of prayer. Because prayer is a living reality, a deeply personal encounter with the living God, it is not to be confined to any given classification or rigid analysis. However, in order to offer some broad, general guidelines for those interested in using the Jesus prayer to develop their inner life, Theophan the Recluse, a 19th century Russian spiritual writer, distinguishes three levels in the saying of the prayer. It begins as an oral prayer, or prayer of the lips, a simple recitation which Theophan defines as prayer's verbal expression and shape. Although very important, this level of prayer is still external to us, and thus only the first step, for the essence or soul of prayer is within a man's mind and heart. Two, as we enter more deeply into prayer, we reach a level at which we begin to pray without distraction. Theophan remarks that at this point, the mind is focused upon the words of the prayer, speaking them as if they were our own. 3. The third and final level is prayer of the heart. At this stage, prayer is no longer something we do, but who we are. Such prayer, which is a gift of the Spirit, is to return to the Father as did the prodigal son, Luke 15 and 32. The prayer of the heart is the prayer of adoption, when God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit that cries, Abba, Father. The Fruits of the Jesus Prayer This return to the Father through Christ in the Holy Spirit is the goal of all Christian spirituality. It is to be open to the presence of the Kingdom in our midst. The, on the anonymous author of The Way of the Pilgrim reports that the Jesus Prayer has two very concrete effects upon his vision of the world. First, it transfigures his relationship with the material creation around him. The world becomes transparent, a sign, a means of communicating God's presence. He writes, When I prayed in my heart, everything around me seemed delightful and marvelous. The trees, the grass, the birds, the air, the light seemed to be telling me that they existed for man's sake, that they witnessed to the love of God for man, that all things prayed to God and sang his praise. Second, the prayer transfigures his relationship to his fellow human beings. His relationships are given form within their proper context. The forgiveness and compassion of the crucified and risen Lord. Again, I started off on my wanderings, but now I did not walk along as before, filled with care. The invocation of the name of Jesus glad gladdened my way. Everybody was kind to me. If anyone harms me, I have only to think how sweet is the prayer of Jesus and the injury and the anger alike pass away and I forget it all. Growth in prayer has no end, Theophon informs us. If this growth ceases, it means that life ceases. The way of the heart is endless because the God whom we seek is infinite in the depths of his glory. The Jesus prayer is a signpost along the spiritual journey, a journey that all of us must take. My name is James Newcomb. I'm glad that you have pressed play on today's episode of Good Morning and Praise the Lord. I hope that this podcast blesses you. I see the numbers and they're consistent and they're not huge numbers, but I, I do see that 
about the same number of people listen to this every day, and it's encouraging for me. So we may never meet in this life, but if you're listening and you listen regularly, please know that it is appreciated, it is noticed, and uh, I'm, I'm very grateful that you uh, tune in every day, and I hope that this blesses you. We will close our session today as we do every morning with the Lord's Prayer. Thank you again for listening and we'll be in your earballs again tomorrow. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.